And uh, we conclude tonight with Tom Owens, who's the Chief Executive Officer of New Urban Properties in San Francisco, a company that uh, emphasizes uh, preserving and revitalizing classic San Francisco landmarks. He's been in real estate for 30 years. Prior to this company that he started, he was a partner with the famous Pacific Union Company. Thank you for being with us. Thank you, Arthur. Glad to be here. Uh, we were chatting about uh, the fact that uh, there's probably no other program in the history of San Francisco broadcasting that's had so many developers on. And it's intentional because I have, I've had nonprofit uh, developers, I've had anti-growth advocates like Sue Hester for 30 minutes last week. Uh, I've had people from the left and people right. That's what makes this program sort of a watering hole. But I wanted developers to come because I want people to see that uh, to a person, uh, a developer cannot be successful unless they are now sensitive to the community. You don't make it into business unless you let the community dictate a lot of what you're going to do. Am I right? Oh, absolutely. It, um, I hope I'm not frightening any children by being <laughs> on your show. Oh, uh, no, absolutely right. Uh, uh, especially San Francisco. I mean, as we all know, San Francisco is extremely protective of uh, its past and uh, very protective of especially what it's going to be like in the future. It's not easy to develop in San Francisco, and for that reason, that, that's probably a good thing because that's what we're trying to do in my company is trying to protect the good parts of San Francisco, which I'll explain in a minute. You take classic older buildings and preserve as much as you can. That's right. What kind of a challenge is that when you have to worry about whole new electrical systems and heating and ventilation and all of that? How, how have you gotten this thing down to an art form? We're going to talk about some of the buildings and still preserve at least the facade of the building, if not more. Well, you've identified the first rule, which is you must preserve the facade. I mean, we've been lucky in our efforts that we've acquired what's called Category 1 historical buildings. And by law and, and by common sense, uh, those facades shouldn't and can't be touched. So the challenge, you're right, the challenge is interiorly, how do we bring those buildings up to a state and a level that first and foremost, obviously, people will want to have their offices in, want to, uh, that secondly, can be something where financially we can afford to do it and, and make a decent return for our partners. But thirdly, uh, meld that in a way that it also uh, guarantees, if you will, that the building is going to be around for a long time. A dysfunctional, beautiful dysfunctional building is a sad thing. You mean that's it, that it's structurally sound as well? Oh yes, absolutely. And especially in the face of any kind of an earthquake, because the facade yeah. must be more weakened than the rest of the building. Well, first and foremost, when we you ask me how we do it, first when we, we look to buy a building, the first thing we do is we do an, an intensive study of the seismic condition of the building. And um, it's surprising. Some of the older buildings in San Francisco really are in very good shape seismically. Some are not. But uh, clearly, one of our jobs is to make sure that the building is brought up to the, the best life safety that can be done for the building. And we've done that in, in And taking some great buildings, uh, we have, I think we're going to have a picture of the call building, the old yeah. San Francisco call building. Um, now, th is this a project that you're working on now? Oh, absolutely. Okay. And is there a cruise down there right now? Oh, yeah, there better be. <laughs> <laughs> You'll check out the front. Right? I'll check out. It's, it's still in the middle of the afternoon. Yes. The call building is uh, perhaps our best example of, of what we take pride in, which is to get a historic building, bring it up uh, again from a use standpoint to the 21st century, and uh, make it in a way that it will be here for the next 100 or 200 years. And that's not hyperbole, because in the case of um, the Cull Building, now called the Montgomery, by the way, uh, we took a classic 1914 building, uh, and beginning in 2003, we had it redesigned, refurbished, and now it's going to be very soon uh, a residence for 107 San Francisco families. And it's in right in downtown San Francisco, as you know. and. Uh, that one is the, the beta of all betas because we frankly had to pull it from the interior. We had to, to essentially build a new building within the building. The wall, the, the, the facade is in place right now. It's being held in place. Oh, no, no, no. The facades have never been touched. Yes, they're, they're, it's they're in place. You, you right. have to secure that. Oh, and yes. Now, how do you begin to, now, when you say you build within it, are you literally building within it or do you bring all of the floors and all of the other structural elements we, we don't attachment to the facade. No, we, we leave the basic skeleton of the building alone so that the facade is always protected, obviously. The floor plates are always the same. We haven't added, for example, you know, interstices. We haven't added different floors. It's still a seven-story building. 
Having done all that, the challenge is to go into it and do the seismic retrofit. And I think that's what you're leading up to. How we do that is we start off in the basement and clearly uh, in the basement we, in the case of the call building now called the Montgomery, we went down about 18 feet below the existing foundation to secure it further. Then without boring you with all the details, if you can imagine a long narrow building, there are uh, two moment frames, one about a third of the way down the length of the building and then one about two thirds of the way down the length of the building. Mm -hmm. And off of that is built and sitting on that, that concrete that we poured below the foundation is sitting, a, if you will, a, almost a new structure within a structure. All the existing floor plates are then tied to that. I see. So, so you literally are building it within. We are. We are. I mean, not, not in the sense that we're completely gutting it and building a new building yeah. within a building, but we're building a, a whole new system. Now, is this similar to your other projects on Pine Street and elsewhere? It, uh, no. Th this one required the most because uh, changing the use from an office, it was traditionally an office from 1914 till uh, we started construction last year in 2006. Uh, when we changed the use, we had to upgrade the seismic condition. And again, without boring you, uh, the seismic condition of the building as an office was more than adequate. But as a residence, we had to, to do a, a major retrofit to uh, make it even stronger. It must be a, a challenge to take an office building like that and convert it to residential. It is. <laughs> Do you get involved personally in, you know, Ange Angelo San Giacomo was on the program and, uh -huh. and he, he, he apparently, he, here's where he intervenes, he intervenes in the layout of each unit. He says he has a special touch for the two bedroom, three bedroom and, and also how they're mixed along the hallway. And so, in other words, that's his forte. Right. Do you like to get involved with that element? Somewhat, yes, absolutely. But, you know, I, I learned a long time ago when uh, I was a practicing an attorney, I had a client one time who was English, and he said, Tom, you don't buy a dog so you can bark yourself. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not sure I always understood what that meant. I, yeah. <laughs> what it means for me, at least, is we, we hire very, very competent experts, one of whom, of course, is, is uh, an architect. Mm -hmm. And the architect, looking through the plate, if you will, of the building, there, it falls naturally that there's a, a good rhythm to the units versus one where it's dysfunctional and, and it's not economical in the use of space. So within that, yes, the architect is there, but there's also some of my own touch you, you, and my you partner's intervene. touch. You, yeah, you have to. We're, you know, let, let's talk about now the city as it's changing right now. Now, you're, you're in this great uh, niche where, where you're able to take classic buildings and preserve them. What do you think about uh, your competitors who are building these huge glass towers, uh, a different kind of living than for you, your, yours are centrally located in, within the community, the downtown community. Right. So it's really the vibrancy. What do you think of uh, where the city is going with all these uh, towers outside the main core of the city? Can they build neighborhoods that, that make them interesting places to live like yours are in downtown? Oh, absolutely. I, I, in fact, I, I balk someone at the idea of calling them a competitor. We have a, our, our buildings are kind of unique. They're, they're a different function. They're f they're, there's a different lifestyle, frankly, to our buildings. How's that? Well, uh, traditionally, people who perhaps like to have an older building, in, definitely in the downtown. I mean, we are at the corner of Maine and Maine with, with the Montgomery, for example. Uh, and there's a lot of condominiums that are being built right around us, and the services are there, and the restaurants, mm -hmm. and the museums, et cetera. Uh, that kind of lifestyle, I would challenge, is probably different from a lifestyle of living in a, a up to 62 story right now, a glass tower on Rincon Hill. That is not a disparagement at all of one Rincon, as an example. To the contrary, I think there's room in San Francisco for both of those styles. And, uh, you know, some people like to have views and they want to pay for the view. Other people want to have the convenience of a downtown and, and the, if you will, you know what category I fall into personally, mm -hmm. the panache of an older building. Mm -hmm. so, but and to be across the street from the Palace Court. It, it, it helps. To be uh, right on Market Street and, and so on. Uh, that is a different kind of lifestyle. It is. And so it, 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 it both have a, a place in San Francisco. It would be the same as saying, you know, do you want to live in a, a brand new tower downtown or at Rincon Hill, or would you like to live in Pacific Heights? It's different living. Different, different living for different folks. We went up uh, with a film crew uh, 
to Rincon Hill and I wanted to go to the top floor and uh, my, my impression is that many people who live in those towers are going to stay there all day, all night. I mean, it's almost uh, like uh, a different world. It's, it's not it the San Francisco that's down below that they're, they're looking at. It, it is interesting because uh, I had the, the fun of going up uh, the outside elevator, I, yes, as, I you did did, <laughs> as you did, <laughs> to the 62nd floor. And uh, I thought I knew what I would feel when I went up there for mm -hmm. the first time. And frankly, I didn't. What, what really surprised me is I had a sense that even though I've lived in San Francisco for 37 years, this is a San Francisco I've never seen before. I mean, clearly, you can't. I mean, unless you had a helicopter, you'd never be able to see this kind of a view ever in your life until recently. Yeah. And I think that that's good. I don't think that's bad. I think that's good for some people. They're going to enjoy that a lot. They're going to pay for it. They're going to, uh, you know, entertain and be a part of the city. As far as what you're saying, its location, the neighborhood will go around. Will will it grow it around. Of course mm -hmm. it will. The services will come. But the sum it. total of your projects and so many other the, the great developers have been on, including the developers of affordable housing, the Tenderloin, outside the Tenderloin, John Stewart and others. Where do you see the city in another uh, 10 or 15, 20 years? I mean, what, what will, it, will it have changed as much as, uh, as it, 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 it appears it is already beginning to? Or is it really going to be the same old San Francisco politically, culturally, and in, you know, in their attitudes and so on? Or are, are, we, are we playing with probably the possibility of creating a whole different environment altogether? Boy, that's a Big question for me. I, I, I frankly, the answer is I probably have don't vision. know. Developers have vision. I know I have vision, but uh, uh, it, it, San Francisco will be different in 20 years than it is now. Just the same as it was 20 years previously. It was do multiples, 40 years, 60. W one of the the great things, and I don't want to sound too uh, uh, romantic about it all, but one of the things I think we both love about our city is that it's constantly evolving. It it is a wonderfully vibrant, brilliant city intellectually brilliant, it's courageous, it takes chances, um, and all the things we like about it, we also have to understand is going to be manifest eventually in the way it's going to look in certain parts of town. It, it will. It, it's going to change whether we like that idea or not. Now, are you going to stay the course with your company? Are you going to continue to buying and preserving the classic uh, buildings in San Francisco? I am, and, and uh, you know, our main emphasis, although we're extremely proud of the Montgomery and the residential aspect of it, uh, but our main focus really is is preserving office buildings, as and office buildings. as office buildings. Mm -hmm. And uh, to that end, right now, we have five buildings in San Francisco, the Montgomery being one of them. But there's the four others we're not going to be converting to, to residential. They're going to stay as office. Well, Tom Owen, I wish you I'm glad that someone's preserving these great great uh, buildings, like the Call Building. Thank and, you. And uh, we wish you the best of luck. Thank you very much. And uh, thank you for joining us. We'll see you next time. For program schedules, post production notes,